France has suspended its honorary consul in Turkey after she was caught selling boats and life jackets to refugees trying to reach Greece from Turkey. Her defense was that if she didn't do it, someone else would. For a closer look at the smugglers working behind the scenes of the refugee crisis, we're joined now by Tuesday Reitano. She's with the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. We reached her in Beirut. Tuesday, we're hearing these reports of a French honorary consul in Turkey caught selling rubber boats and life jackets to refugees, as I mentioned. And in the same city, Alan Kurdi, that little boy and his family, launched from. Are you surprised by this? A little, I suppose, but given the trends that we're seeing both across North Africa and across Europe right now, I suppose not immensely. There is, it's not that it will be the first, it will not be the first time that consulate staff have been involved in facilitating illicit migration. There have been many cases in West Africa where European embassies have sold visas on the quiet to help people get to Europe, making, taking the profits for themselves, of course. But I, it, it is certainly unfortunate, but I do think that the level of refugee crisis that Turkey is facing at the moment is unprecedented for them. And there are a number of individual citizens who are working to facilitate illicit migration across individual borders. It really seems so widespread, and it begs the question, who are these smugglers operating on the route uh, from Syria to Europe? Is it mostly organized crime? Yes and no. I mean, as the honorary consul showed, there are a number of very ordinary citizens who are getting involved in smuggling, and many are doing it for humanitarian reasons. We've seen cases in Europe of individual students or people putting a migrant or two in the backs of their cars and helping them get between Calais and the UK, for example, because they feel that it's the right thing to do. There, And that it really spreads the whole gamut of criminality. There are certainly opportunistic individuals who are keen to make a buck pay, taking a couple of migrants for a couple of hundred dollars, say, over the Hungary border, um, all the way to the more organized criminal gangs who are facilitating very sophisticated illicit migration schemes and have been doing so for multiple years taking people through multiple borders, multiple countries, using corruption, violence, and different modes of transport. So with the level of migration that's going on now, there's so much money, it's attracting everybody. Uh, let's talk about that, the money, uh, that factor. How profitable is it? Extraordinarily. I mean, we did a relatively rough calculation in the last year that estimated that Libyan smugglers are earning in the region of $325 million putting people to sea, uh, U.S. dollars. So there really is an enormous money to, amount of money to be made. And it's never been the kind of money that was available to be made in the human smuggling business before. The Syrians have really changed the game for the way that human smuggling and trafficking has worked. How would you say the Syrian refugee crisis has impacted smuggler routes? It's turned, there have always been smugglers' routes along all of these routes. I mean, the Western Balkan route, the North African route, the Mediterranean crossing between Libya and Italy. None of these are new. Some of them must go back centuries, back to slave trading and before. But they've never been so profitable. There have been cyclical peaks, but with the number of Syrians who are moving at this present time and their disposable income before the crisis is really unprecedented. I mean, the amount of money that the Syrians had, a lot of the people moving now that we see in the news in Europe, they're middle-class Syrians with university degrees and professional backgrounds who do have thousands of dollars to spend trying to find their family a new life. And this is something that's just exceeded the market for smuggling services in the past. How do you tackle a problem like this? It is very challenging now particularly now when there are so many actors in the markets. And Europol, for example, has put out an estimate that there are some 30,000 individual smugglers working in the smuggling market, bringing all of the different nationalities to Europe. But the driving force and the catalyst for what is the current crisis is unquestionably the movement of Syrians. And it's there, I think, that you need to look for an answer. The levels of migration from West Africa and East Africa and Afghanistan are very high now. But nothing has fundamentally changed in those countries of origin. What has brought them is a very aggressive smuggling trade, which has become very aggressive and very opportunistic because the Syrians were there. Solutions need to be found to manage the Syri Syrian refugee crisis, to find 
options closer to source that allow them to move legally and safely. And then the others should, over time, die back down to their normal levels. If there are no solutions found uh, in the next few weeks, next few months to come, what do you think the long-term trajectory will be of this problem? Frankly, and from an organized crime perspective specifically, not great. Um, as I've said, it's, the Syrian refugee flow has really changed the game for smuggling groups. It's almost like a new drug trafficking route has come into play that, you know, West Africa is famous because drug, cocaine started to transit it in the early 1990s. Now smugglers have come with more money than they've ever had before, and they've invested that money in building up their illicit businesses and cacheting arms and improving their vehicles. And as the flow becomes more lucrative, then there's competition around it. The groups consolidate, corruption networks form, and that becomes then a very entrenched organized crime business, which becomes harder and harder to unseat. And even if the smuggling stops, they're well positioned then to tack on to new forms of illicit trade. Thanks for sharing your perspective, Tuesday. My pleasure. Have a good evening. You too. That's Tuesday Ray Tano. She's with the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. We reached her in Beirut.